Hey guys, in this video, we're talking about conditional statements and negations. Before we get into the statements, um, I want you to keep in mind that this unit that you're getting into now deals with logic and reasoning, uh, which is something that you use in class all of the time. Every time you solve a problem, you're using you know, some, some step you can apply to the problem you know you can do because you know the rule that exists, okay? And you're using logic and reasoning every time you solve a problem. Uh, so these first couple of videos here might seem like you're in an English class or something, but we're just trying to help you think about the way that you think. So just keep that in mind as we go through this unit. Now let's get into conditional statements. Now a conditional statement is, uh, simply put, it's just, it's just a, sta a logical statement that's in an if-then format, okay, where something uh, is a result of the other or something is a condition of the other, okay? Um, now we always put it in this if-then format. Um, P and Q that you see on your screen here, we just use that to designate uh, the hypothesis and the conclusion because you will be in the next video kind of changing the order of these hypotheses and conclusions um, to see then if, if the statement still hold true or not, okay? Uh, another thing, you might see the symbol where you see that P and then the arrow to Q. That is just the symbol for the conditional statement. Again, if you switch the order, it's a different kind of statement. So. Keep that in mind when you see that uh, little symbol given to you. So let's do uh, an example of some conditional statements. I think it's easier to explain with some examples. Let's say that you have these two statements. You live in Denton, you live in Texas. Okay, one, if one relies on the other, then we can write that as a conditional statement. Or we might say, if you live in Denton, then you live in Texas. Basically what we did here is we took the first statement and used that as our hypothesis where the conclusion was reliant on that hypothesis, okay? If you live in Denton, then you live in Texas. Let's think about whether or not this is true, actually, because one of the things that you're going to have to do when you're dealing with these statements is you're going to have to determine the truth value. Is this a true or false statement? Because as you are going to see in the next video, as you change the order, it might determine whether or not that statement is still true or not. And to be true, it has to be true in all situations, okay? There can't be one single uh, example of, of, of where this statement could be false. That would make it false if you have one, one way that you can prove it to be false. So it's got to be true in all cases, okay? So let's think about this one. If you live in Denton and you live in Texas, is that a true or false statement? Well, if you know that Denton is in Texas, that's going to be a true statement because if you live in Denton, then you live in the state of Texas. So that is a true statement. Now, again, in the next video, you're going to be switching the order. So I don't want you to start thinking about if you switch the order of that hypothesis and conclusion, is that still a true statement? We might also have to take a single statement and write a conditional statement from it because a statement like this, all birds have feathers, this is does have a uh, hypothesis and a conclusion. You know, we can, we're assuming here that this is pertaining to all birds, no matter what kind of bird it is. And that conclusion that we're assuming is that it has feathers if it's a bird, okay? So we wanna write that as a conditional statement. We would just put it into this if-then format. Now notice this conditional statement, we can't just simply say, if all birds then have feathers. That statement just doesn't make any sense. So we're gonna to have to change kind of the way we write that in order for that statement to actually make sense to the person reading it. So in this case, we had to add a couple of words and we might write a conditional statement such as this. If an animal is a bird, then it has feathers. It still means the exact same thing. We added a couple of words in there, uh, but it has still the same meaning. OK, and then we would determine whether or not that was true or false. Let's look at a couple examples and then uh, look at true or false statements. If you play soccer, then you are an athlete. Well, is this a true or false statement? If you said true, you would be correct because the definition of an athlete is somebody that plays sports, okay? Um, or that works out or whatever is involved in some sort of sport. And a soccer player is somebody that's involved in a sport, so they would be an athlete, so that would be true. What about this one? If it is sunny, then it is warm. Let's think about whether or not that is true or false. Well, in most cases, this would probably be true. If it's sunny, you would think it's warm. I mean, you know, if we're in August like we are now, it's, it's warm outside, okay? It's warm outside even when it's not sunny. But think about a case where it might be uh, sunny but not warm, right? What about if it's February and it's 30 degrees outside? Could it still be sunny? 
yeah. So just because it's sunny doesn't necessarily that it's warm all the time. So in that case, uh, because we found an example in February where it might be sunny and not warm, this has to be a false statement because it's not true all the time when it's sunny. Now, negations are just basically stating the opposite of what your original statement was. Okay, and we usually do that with this word not. Or if our original statement contained not, then we just say that it is. Okay. Um, by the way, that symbol is that little squiggly line, uh, which you will see later on down the road in probability. So that is basically the negation of whatever statement you're making. Um, so let's just do a look at a couple of, of statements here and, and determine the negation. So like this statement, the sky is blue. What's the negation of that? Well, you would just say the sky is not blue. You could not pick another color because that wouldn't be the true negation, even though it's something else other than blue. But the true negation, the exact opposite of that statement is that it is not blue. The cat is not black. Well, what, was that? what would that negation statement be? All right, you just take out the not. So the cat is black. Again, you can't say the cat is another color or whatever. The cat is black. That would be the negation. So those are your conditional statements and negations. Uh, stay tuned in the next video. We're going to be talking about converse, inverse, and contrapositive statements.